This is Daybreak and thank you for staying with us. The hashtag on X is Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadir with me in studios. Earlier mentioned this Dr. Makali Mulo, Wakelif Bichange and Ann Mangondo. And they shortly will be taking the account in regards to the presentation that uh, will be made at the National Assembly this afternoon by the Treasury Cabinet Secretary, Professor Njoguna Ndungu, who will deliver President William Ruto's second budget for the financial year. 2024-2025, coming after the conclusion of uh, the hearings that happened before the Finance and National Planning Committee of the National Assembly. The government's unyielding stand on taxes says the paper, even as Kenyans wonder where it all goes. The question of accountability that we'll be discussing here. The president is adamant that taxes will go up the went up to the countries when the country will develop and says that it's Kenyans who will develop their own country, but faces dilemma of raising taxes in an economy that has made the cost of living too high for many Kenyans. The paper has also analysis in regards to the secret statements and why the late Kibaki's budgets hit home at a time like this. It says the big thing is that the Constitution 2010 promulgated 2010 one of the major accomplishments it has achieved is that uh, it gave Parliament the note in regards uh, to specifically making the budget and not the National Treasury. We will be discussing that. We have a member of the Budget Committee with us in studio. Uh, this as Kenyans prepare for painful tax burden ahead of budget reading. We will be taking a look at whether some of the proposals that were made before the Finance and National Planning Committee will be considered. And here my panel is fully constituted shortly the Senator Naro County and the Minority Whip will be with us, Ole Dama, Ole Kina here. First, I begin with you, Anne, the, the only lady on the panel. Yeah. Given what you have heard and um, happening before the Finance and National Planning Committee of the National Assembly, and the proposals that um, sector allocations that were done ahead of the presentation by the Treasury CS, what then is your assessment looking at where we were last year, a time like this when there was decry about the contents of the finance bill, now an act of parliament, and now finance bill 2024, which will come before parliament for deliberations? Thank you so much. Uh, my views are we are still not out of the woods. I feel that the proposal of the finance bill 2024 will also have far reaching implications to the local Mananji as well as business person. Uh, noting that uh, just from the Finance Act 2023, yeah. we are still feeling the ripple effect. So if we carry on this again to 2024, 2025, then we see uh, the sector, the individuals, as well as businesses suffering. So we hope that uh, from the various presentations made before the committee, they'll take uh, those comments up because from the look of things, it will be tough. Yeah. yeah. Honorable Makali Mulo, you sit at the Budget Committee of the National Assembly, which is also key in the budget making process. Um, I mean, when, when we look at uh, the expenditure, the revenue size, before getting into the technicalities and, and the deficit, what's your takeaway? Less, what is the takeaway lesson from the pathway now to the finalization of the budget 2024 25 in terms of? the um, hearings before your committee, which happened before the National uh, Finance and National Planning Committee as well, and then now the final deliberations, which will happen before the National Assembly, where you sit and which is a key component in this entire budget making cycle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ayubu, for hosting us. Uh, you know, uh, we are discussing the budget, that is 2024, 2025 uh, budget. As I was coming, I was just thinking and uh, asking myself. Last week, Parliament did pass the budget estimates mm -hmm. through the Committee of Supplies. And the only thing remaining now is the appropriation bill, which means the expenditure items are already agreed and passed by Parliament. You put, said it next week on Wednesday, the finance bill report will be presented to Parliament. Yes. Kenyans have given their input to that, that finance bill. The finance bill is expected to raise about three or two billion okay. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, where we have agreed on the expenditure items, and now this is, this is the revenue raising side of the budget. Do we have any room 
to, to, to maneuver. Because the question is, and I've the same question the PS Treasury will be asking. Yeah. Now, if you change this finance bill, uh, let's say we agree we, we remove one or two items, so there will be a financing gap. So how do you finance this gap? At the same time, when you look at our, our public debt, we are almost at the level of this distress. Almost, we are almost there actually. Just at the cliff. Maybe we require just a second and we go down, down the cliff. So with that situation, I agree with what Anne is saying, that we are, we are in between a hard place and a, a rock. That, that as a country, we have to think of how do we get out of this, this problem? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kenyans out there are saying, we've reached the, the point where we can't pay anymore. At the same time, as a country, we are saying, we need development. We have agreed we are going to spend. So it, it's a very delicate balance. And that's why I'm saying we really need to look at where are we spending our money? Where are we applying this money? Are there areas we could possibly say, defer this to the next year so that we will leave a bit of what Kenyans are going through. Okay. Uh, and I think Ayub, that is the, the, the question we'll be asking ourselves as we, as we debate this, because uh, you know I sit in the Public Data and Privatization Committee. And yesterday we, 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 we moved our report as a committee. And one of the most glaring things, which I think will also be capturing, out of the revenue we are going to collect, yeah. which is a revenue about, projected revenue is about 2.91 trillion. Mm -hmm. We are projecting to use 1.83 trillion to pay public debt. Okay. So if you do simple mathematics, we are going to use about 62% percent. Percent of our revenue to pay debt. That is both interest and debt, public debt redemption. Now, interest alone is a whole trillion which is 55% of the total projected revenue, ordinary revenue. So what it means basically, you'll have about, for every 100 shillings, you have about 45 shillings, which you now you will cut off for the, rest of, for the rest of the public expenditure. And you know, our law is very clear. Okay. Public debt repayments are first charge to have consolidated fund. Correct. Which, which means ours. you must pay your den yeah. before anything else. So, so these are the issues, and at least as experts here and as who are politicians, yeah. these are the hard questions we must be able to, 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 to crack. That's okay. a nut to crack All right. so that we, we help yeah. this country. Talking about that, because if you look at the consolidated fund services, public debt is number one. There's the aspect of pensions, salaries of selected constitutional office holders, and uh, the government subscription to international bodies. But you see even from the onset, more than 50% gone to pay public debt. But Honorable Makali Mulu, before I come to Wycliffe, you talked about the dilemma that we are facing of being caught up uh, between a rock and a hard place. But then, this is the question that the taxpayer will ask you, for example, a policy-making player, and who sits at the National Assembly, how did we get here? Uh, the reason why we've got in here quite a number of reasons, w one of them I always say, we've not been very keen as a country on where we apply money to, where we apply our money. Because at times, in our books, you'll find what we call non co expenditure items. Mm -hmm. Because even at your own level, Ayubu, when you are doing your, business, uh, your own budget at personal level, I'm sure you'll not do a budget to buy uh, your son a toy before you have factored in food. So, so there is what we call hierarchy of needs that you start with the most basic and going up. And I think really, the, the, the area of where do we apply money, that's the first question. Okay. The other area where we have been having challenges is the issue of also the, the wage bill. I think wage bill over time, we have said, is taking a lot of the resources, and you people must be paid salaries. For example, now I think we are at around 46% uh, uh, yeah. of the ordinary revenue. And the, 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 the rule of thumb is that if you are above that 5%, percent. you have a reason to worry. The other thing which we must also talk about is the issue of uh, the, the public debt is another major issue. Being a first charge, you have to pay your debt. So it means any budget you do, you must factor in public debt repayments into that budget. And that one you have no choice. You must. Because if you don't pay your debts, the consequences will be more serious than what we are going through. And then the last one which you must always be talking about are issues of misapplication of resources, what you call corruption. The general ear in, ear out yeah. is telling us, yeah. guys, 
that percent of your budget, yeah. the money you budget for, is, is not applied, uh, uh, what I would say, uh, effectively. Yeah. Uh, uh, people are, uh, they are, they are, they are yeah. where the money goes, which yeah. is not helping Kenya. And a practical case was given by the control of budget when she appeared before the NATCO committee, uh, the bombers of Kenya, where she said where the consolidated fund where she draws her own salary, it's cheap all tries, but the money doesn't end up in her account. So we'll be talking about the accountability aspect and the budget making process where yeah. parliament is very key as the constitution stipulates. Weekly coming to you, then there seems to be an appetite to increase our revenue, which is good because the, the more taxes we pay, um, the more the, the public ought to be get, getting services. And, and this borders on rights, not privileges, certainly because the taxpayers must get services from the government. But then is the question of under collection here satisfactorily in, in a satisfied manner being addressed because we are some 17 days before the end of the financial year 2023-24 and we are short of the target by about 300 billion Kenya shillings, a near impossibility to achieve that in the next 14 days or so. Then how can that be addressed even as the targets uh, keep on, I mean, scaled up, being scaled up in regards to our revenue uh, projections and the under collections which seem to be apparent as we speak. Um, thank you Ayub and uh, a very good morning. What I believe is that um, we're having a challenge in collecting, we're having a challenge in our revenues and I think there's also a maximum that you can actually collect. Maybe these are indications and somebody needs to take these indications seriously that if <coughs> in and, and this has been the trend over the years that we've been under collecting. We've been under achieving our targets. So I believe the best thing to do at this point is not just to keep on pushing. It's good to keep on pushing and that is why we can see that uh, every finance bill is coming in with new things. Every finance bill is coming in with new measures to tax more, to tax more. But I think it's now time for us to have that conversation and say, if we are not able to achieve this, let's look at our expenditure. Because, uh, I mean, when you think about it, we cannot keep on hoping that we're going to achieve, and then we don't achieve every single year. Like now, if we are less by 300 billion, uh, expect that the 2.9 we expect to, uh, yeah, to, yeah. to collect mm -hmm. in this budget, we're also going to underachieve in collection of that. What that means, Whereas we are thinking that our borrowing will be in the region of about 700, 800 billion, it's actually going to be much more. And yet, we know that our biggest problem at the moment, as uh, Dactaria said, is that we are spending, we will be spending about 39% yeah. of, uh, of our budget repaying debt. So if we're going to borrow more, it means that the future can only be worse. So I seriously think as a country, it's time for us to think on how we reduce our expenditure. Let's open up the budget. You know, over the years, our budgeting process has been incremental. So we look at what, where were we, and probably increase. But I think it's now time to seriously sit down, open up the budget, and say, you know what? Can we identify areas that are probably leading to misuse of funds and get them out of our budget? Mm -hmm. If we do not do that, our problem can only compound over the years. All right. And, and uh, Senator, I'll come to you after the short break here. And, and, and uh, um, uh, OK, uh, I'll still get your account nonetheless. And then we're back on the break. So, Senator, a, a lot has happened, especially with regards to um, the events before the National Assembly's Finance and National Planning Committee and the views expressed by Kenyans, a majority who are up in arms against some of the proposals that we'll be talking about. But as, as Wycliffe mentions here, is are some of these proposals discouraging in, in many ways? Because if you look at the, the year 2023, when the VAT on, on fuel and petroleum products were increased from 8 to 16 percent, there was a 23 percent reduction less than the fuel that was consumed across the country in 2022. Yet here, there are other proposals that uh, may affect other sectors as contained in the Finance Bill 2024. Are some of these proposals discouraging, even as the government has this ambitious plan of raising our revenues to, uh, to address some of our key issues, education, healthcare, infrastructure, but are they considerate about the discouragement that accompanies some of these proposals, as Kenyans have said? I think you've nailed it. You've actually laid out where the problem is. 
and Wycliffe. Is it Wycliffe? Yes. Wycliffe has actually asked the right question and said, why are we under collecting? And the answer is very simple, because we are overtaxing Kenyans. When you continue overtaxing Kenyans, what is the net uh, effect? Businesses will close down. Kenyans will have little money to be able to spend. You will continue having a utopian budget that will be followed with a number of supplementary budgets for you to try and realign your own budget to see what you can be able to achieve. So the, the most important thing is for us to demystify the budget to the Wanainchi. Do the Wanainchi know? I can tell you, many years ago, and actually this has been captured in the, in the dailies, people were excited for the budget day. Now people don't even give a hoot in hell about the budget. Because you come there, you tell us so many good things that you're going to do this and you're going to do this. You launch projects and then you carry out supplementary budgets. When you ask, why is this project not being done? You know, you say, oh, we'll carry out a supplementary budget to be able to do it. Why do you want to live you know, a life that you cannot be able to afford? So the most important thing for us to really focus on is to try and listen to Kenyans, because we're not listening to Kenyans. I can tell you this as a politician, as a parliamentarian, that whenever we go to public participations, we collect the views of the public, but we don't consider them. That's a fact. You know, I don't like um, you know, trying to you put butter to a bread which does not even, which, can, which, which is not even bread. I like telling the truth. We don't consider that. And I can assure you that all the views of Kenyans yeah. You know, in regards to the painful reality, none of them will be considered. The challenge is, is that we are not controlling ourselves. You know, the IMF and the World Bank are the ones who are dictating which policies we should be able to, to put. So let's call a spade a spade. What we need to do is to now realign our own existing resources, ask ourselves, how can we afford? You know, we come up with something very, and, and this trickles down even to county, county, county governments. Well, you see a county government like Nairobi as an example. Nairobi will say that their budget is 42 billion. Mm -hmm. 42 billion. Their shareable revenue is 20 billion. Over the last five years, Nairobi has only collected, if you say this year is a year that Nairobi has collected more, they have collected 12 billion. So if you say 12, 20 billion plus 12 billion, that is 32 billion. Okay? So what happens ultimately? You will have a bloated budget, which you will not be able to do what? To be able to fund. What happens? Again, you will have politicians like us. We are the problem. I can tell you that. Okay. At the assembly, every MCA will push and say, I want this project done. I want this project done. You know, when you look at it, our own policies do not allow us to cut the budget. Once the budget has been passed, it has to be, to be implemented. So we, we now need to look back and say, what can we do, you know, as executives? What can we do? You know, you might come out there and impress Kenyans and say you've got a three trillion budget. Okay. But you really have the funding. So the thing is, is that we now have to prioritize. Instead of carrying out supplementary budgets over, over every three months or every, every two months, you're carrying out a supplementary budget, the most important thing is to say, okay, this is our utopian budget, but this is the reality. In fact, if in basic accounting, there is a planning budget and there is an actual budget. So you say, we are not going to commit. We will only commit when we have money. Okay. My colleague has told you here that the first charge of account is our public debt. When we now go to county government, the first charge on account is the pending bills. And this is why the Senate, by its own wisdom, passed a resolution that all counties must pay pending bills. And we will make sure in fact, the resolution was very clear. It says by the end of this financial year, all counties must have paid a billion shillings of their pending bills. If you do not have, then the control of budget cannot release funds to you. Okay. And those are the things that we'll have to look at it and see. How do we bring in this fiscal discipline? Okay. That's the biggest question. Oh, okay, and, and, and we'll talk about the deficit when we come back and uh, the adjustments in terms of a reduction in expenditure. The control of budget's recent report of uh, how excesses uh, of the executive have been laid bare with regards to foreign travels, which is now up by more than 4.11 billion, and uh, satisfactory answers not provided in some cases, no paperwork. And uh, in cases where there were, the control of budget, Dr. Nyakango, pointed out that there were glaring discrepancies in terms of the paperwork and 
knowingly or unknowingly. We'll be talking more about that as we proceed and uh, discuss the Finance Bill 2024, which is high on indirect taxes, and also Budget Day 2024, that will be for the financial year 24-25, that will be presented in Parliament later in the afternoon by the Treasury Cabinet Secretary, Professor Njugunandongo. We welcome your contributions. The hashtag on X is Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadin. We are back with more after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs>